Welcome to one more Flip Classroom Math video. Three tips before you start. First, you can slow down or speed up the playback if that helps you watch the video at your own pace. Second, you can pause the video anytime to jot down notes. Third, you can turn on the captions and watch my words go by on the bottom of your screen. Today's lesson covers measuring correlation. Now, when we looked at our scatter plots in the last lesson, we could see that there are relationships that existed between two variables. And depending on how the points fall on the scatter plot, we can say it's a pretty strong relationship or maybe a moderate or maybe a weak relationship. So in this lesson, we're going to quantify that. So let's take a look at one possible scenario. Here's a scatter plot of hours of sleep compared to score on a test. And you can see, it looks to me, like from this graph, that there is a correlation. The more sleep, the higher the score. But there are some points that are against that. So we'd like to have a numerical way of looking at this data and be able to say, how strong is that correlation? And indeed, we're going to do that, and that's about the R value. And I'm going to show you how to calculate that. Welcome to the Pearson Product Moment Coefficient. Boy, that's a mouthful. Good thing we have a shorthand for that. It's also called the R value or just simply lowercase r. This number is calculated based on a data set and it will allow you to say whether the correlation is negative or positive and just how strong it is. And then remember, correlation is not necessarily causation. It's an important step, but you have to do more work to actually figure out whether you have causation. Okay. So check this out. R can be found by performing a regression calculation on your GDC or your graphing display calculator. We'll get to that in a moment. Let's look at some graphs. So I've got seven graphs here all lined up and I've got their modifiers, the descriptive words, perfect, strong, weak, zero, etc. And then I've got some example R values that would link up with these graphs. So check this out, a perfect R is one, perfect correlation, and that's basically a line. These points are in a line. You could actually write the equation of this line, and that would be perfect correlation. And that would be an R of one. Strong means that it looks pretty much like a line, but it's not quite there. It's a, the points are bouncing around just a little bit. So that's a strong positive correlation, and the R value for that graph might be 0.8. Now, a weak correlation looks like it is trending, like that sleep example I put up on the last board, but it's not really like clustered around either a straight line or close to a line. This is sort of all over the place, but generally it's trending up. So that would be a weak correlation, and you might have a R value of 0.4 for that. Here's zero correlation. I don't see any correlation between the X and the Y values in that graph. So that would be a zero correlation, and the R value for that would be zero. Now, going into the negative correlations is the same idea, except our R values are now negative, and we have weak, strong, and perfect, explained just in the same way as the positive correlations. All right, let's talk about the descriptors that go with the ranges in the R value. And the positive and the negative work in the same way. So again, our perfect correlation, perfect positive, R is 1, perfect negative, R is negative 1. And then as we just go down the list, we have strong, which is between 0.75 and 1. That's a strong, either positive or negative correlation. Then the next modifier is moderate. That's like not quite strong, but it's there. It's moderate. And that's between 0.5 and 0.75 or between negative 0.75 and negative 0.5 for your R value. So that's your moderate. And then the next two, we have weak and very weak. So weak is between 0.25 and 0.5, same thing for negatives. And then um, very weak is 0.0 to 0.25 and minus 0.25 to 0. So that's very weak. And then, of course, zero correlation doesn't matter. It's not negative or positive. So this is a key for your descriptors for what you say when you're asked to describe the correlation that you see in a data set. Here's a scenario and we're gonna find our first R value. So check this out. A basketball coach keeps track of points scored and games played for his players or for her players. So 
She's trying to see if there's a correlation between how many games somebody plays and how many points they score. And I think we could guess, yeah, there's gonna be a correlation. The more time you're out on the court, the more points you're gonna get to score. But let's calculate that. So here's her data. Three games played, nine points scored, four games played, 10, four, 20, four, 16, five, 20, and so on. And you can see that the data definitely shows a trend, but it's not perfect, right? It's definitely choppy. Um, we, have, we have three people that played four games each, but their scores range from 10 to 20. So we'd like to know the R value of this, of this data set. And remember, this is bivariate data. We have two variables, games played and points scored. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna post some instructions and some video links in the comments on this video. And I want you to pause the video and get out your calculator and go ahead and find the R value for this data set. All right, so here's what I get when I put this in my TI-84. I get an R value of 0 0.957. Now, pause the video and describe that correlation. All right, so if you got strong positive, you're right. This is almost one. This is very close to a perfect correlation, but it's not quite, so we say strong positive correlation. Now, if you're wanting to uh, experiment around with your calculator, see if you can write up a data set that would give you a perfect correlation. See if you can do that just for fun. Let's do one more example. So this time we have a farmer who records data on rainfall in centimeters and rice yield in tons. And we're interested to know if there's more rainfall, do we get a bigger harvest? Do we get more rice? And seems like there should be a pretty positive correlation in there, but maybe not. Now take a look. I always think it's a good idea to do what I call data snooping. It's just snooping on the data. Just look it over and just see if you notice anything. And for me, there's a standout here, but I want you to pause the video and take a look at this and then come back. I'm seeing that these, four, these first four rows of data, it generally seems to have a good correlation. 130, we get 94 tons. 150, we get 100. 140, we get 90. 180, we get 120. That's pretty good. But then 350 centimeters this particular year, and we only got 20 tons. So something's going on there. It's not perfect data. We might not get a strong correlation. Maybe there's a flood. Maybe this rainfall rec uh, represents a flood which washed out the field so there was no crop possible. So anyway, we have to count that. That's valid data. We're trying to find out what kind of correlation exists between rainfall and rice yield. So now I want you to pause the video, and if you need to refer to those instructions down below in the comments, do that, and use your calculator to find the R value for this data. calculation on my TI-84, I get an R value of 0.44, which is a weak positive correlation. So there is a positive correlation, but it's kind of weak. And so probably there's a lot of other factors here that influence yield. Maybe he had a good amount of fertilizer one year, maybe not another year. Um, maybe the weather was cold one year and warm the other year, things like that. So rainfall alone is not a good correlation with rice yield. Now that you've watched the video, take a moment to jot down any remaining questions so you can bring them to our next class. You can also watch the video again if you need to deepen your understanding. If you enjoyed the experience, please click like or subscribe.